This course will cover power supplies for different markets. In this course, we'll provide an overview of power supplies used in different markets. Across the many market segments, the main thing we see is that the product sizes are shrinking while functionality is increasing. Every market is unique and has varying requirements of power levels, size, and load regulation. We will cover basics of standard, industrial, mobile, and automotive power supplies. First, let's take a look at standard power. Standard power covers a broad market, which ranges from high power computing ICs to low power wearable products. Standard power supplies encompass power management ICs and core power products like buck, boost, buck boost, LDOs, and charge pumps. These devices are also widely used in consumer electronics and biomedical applications. The key to success is to accumulate expertise through creating customized power management solutions. It is not just sufficient to extract these IPs, but an ongoing continuous improvement is required to cater to the dynamic market challenges. Power systems are somewhat unique as they are generally implemented with one controller IC and a host of discrete components, ranging from RC networks, compensation components, and charging elements like inductors. So not only is the power subsystem not particularly integrated, but its performance also depends on the selected discrete components. If the power requirements change, the entire subsystem, including the discrete devices, must be redesigned. This is not particularly conducive to ease of use and faster time to market. Next generation integrated power ICs will incorporate most of the discrete logic, including compensation, and yet will deliver over 90% conversion efficiency across the range of load currents. These ICs are required to build power systems running at higher efficiency to minimize losses. An integrated approach also makes the power system easier to design and easier to change without a whole lot of guesswork. Finally, all systems demand robust and reliable power subsystems, since if the power subsystem fails, the equipment fails. The factors a power system designer has to consider are efficiency, system cost, size, and system reliability. The end product sizes are shrinking, thereby causing more challenges for a power designer, as smaller systems don't have much space to dissipate heat, which in turn can affect the efficiency adversely. System designers have to increase copper layers for heat dissipation, which increases the cost. To meet all these challenges, Integrated synchronous power converters not only ensure compact size, but also ensure to give maximum efficiency. Maximum devices not only have low quiescent current to ensure longer battery life in standby mode, but also minimized EMI interference by the spread spectrum feature, where switching frequency is modulated by plus or minus 3% to shift the noise from the center switching frequency to a more wider noise spectrum. The spread spectrum can be enabled on the device using a pin. When this pin is pulled high, this feature is enabled. When the spread spectrum feature is on, the operating frequency is varied around the center frequency, F OSC, by a certain percentage. By shifting the frequency spectrum, we also shift the noise spectrum to a frequency range thus reducing noise magnitude. The graph on the right shows a test result we conducted in an EMI chamber. As you can see, at 2.2 MHz, we passed the EN55022 limit. Out-of-phase operation reduces the stress on the input capacitor. In the in-phase operation, the amount of input current required is high, which results in larger ripples and much more capacitance value is required to reduce the ripple. On the other hand, 
In out of phase operation, clocks are 180 degree out of phase, and both phases don't turn on at the same time, but are 180 degrees of each other, and the input capacitor needs to have only the sufficient capacitance to cope with the larger current between the two phases, thus lowering ripple. This is a typical standard power device, the MAX17230 or 231. It is a family of high input range, low quiescent current, dual step-down converters. The dual output option allows people to use less space to regulate two outputs. The output phases are 180 degrees out of phase to reduce input ripple and capacitance to guarantee a more efficient, compact, and cost-constrained design. Next is industrial power. Let's start with a general industrial power system architecture. Many industrial systems start with AC power in, which is then converted to a DC backplane of 24 volt or 12 volt. With this backplane bus, power is supplied to various IC components that may need 3.3 volts, 5 volts, 12 volts, or any other such voltage. Buck boost converters and modules perform this power conversion at very high efficiencies. Also, in many cases, the power has to be isolated using magnetic isolation to protect the downstream components. In many industrial systems, protection from high voltages and currents have to be designed to withstand the rugged operating conditions. In general, industrial power focuses on four areas. System protection, isolated controllers and FET drivers, high voltage buck boost modules, and power modules. Let's discuss these focus areas. System protection ICs. All systems are prone to voltage, current, thermal, and other faults. Some examples of these are supply bounce during hot plugging, over voltage during surges and transients, large reverse current flow in the supplies due to a short circuit, and supply reversal due to improper cabling. Proper protection is critical for system uptime, and it plays an important role for the overall system reliability and efficiency. Isolated controllers and FET drivers. Isolated controllers are used to ensure safety and reliability without compromising the efficiency of the system. Isolated solutions can be either AC to DC or DC to DC. There is a choice of traditional or no-opto solutions depending upon the regulation accuracy, size constraints, and the lowest bomb cost. No-opto technology eliminates unreliable optocouplers and related feedback components, making it ideal for compact and efficient solutions. Dynamic adjustment in switching frequency for flyback or active clamp is also in demand for low EMI and high immunity against RF interference. Similarly, MOSFET drivers are key performers in motor control, power bricks, and industrial control equipment. High voltage buck boost. Synchronous rectification is not new by any means for conventional buck boost systems. It has been around for a long time at 12 volts, and 5 volt levels in the mobile and computing applications. It has really helped to leverage the benefits of efficiency and low temperature rise. However, synchronous rectification for the 24 volt bus application with 60 volt operational capability is a relatively new development. There are strong design challenges to be overcome here, and Maxim has successfully solved these to develop the broadest range of such products in the market. Power modules. Power modules are perfect examples of progressive integration of power solutions where a complete power supply is integrated in one module with a minimum number of external components. Maxim's industrial power products arsenal comprises four categories. We have a large lineup of high current buck regulators 
that feature over 90% efficiency and 60 volt built-in protection. With integrated high side and low side FETs, as well as integrated compensation, these high voltage bucks can help to minimize external discrete components required and make the smallest size power solutions possible. We have also introduced modules based on our high voltage buck product portfolio that integrate the inductor and with a QFN like pinout allows for easy layout of the system board. Maxim's Himalaya technology delivers the industry's highest efficiency power modules. Maxim has a unique portfolio of integrated protection ICs that allows customers to build robust and guaranteed protection without the guesswork involved with discrete implementations. For isolated power supplies, Maxim offers a line of flyback and ISO bucks that implement isolated power without the need for optocouplers for secondary feedback. This is an example of a synchronous buck regulator, the MAX 17503. This device features N MOSFETs for both high and low side and delivers a peak efficiency of 92%. It is also robust and easy to implement. This is an example of a no opto flyback controller, the MAX 17690. Another market is mobility power. Microprocessors are used everywhere in the electronics industry. Microprocessor power requirements are unique and they are usually in the low voltage and high current domain. The load current of a microprocessor ranges from a few hundred milliamps to tens of amps. Mobile power applications usually have a microprocessor that requires current up to 20 amps. This requirement is less than the requirement of servers and notebook PCs, but they still need large currents. Additionally, mobile power is being run by a battery. Therefore, it has a specialized input voltage range of approximately 2.7 volts to 4.8 volts for battery applications uh, powered by single cell lithium ion batteries. Microprocessor systems have a unique challenge to get the highest performance from the processor. The above scope photo shows output voltage V out, which is the processor's VDD supply. The blue line is a typical load transient response of V out versus time. The pinkish lines add the accuracy tolerances for line, load, and temperature variations. Number one on the bullets corresponds to number one on the scope photo. At number one, a given processor technology node can only withstand a certain VDD, such as 1.17 volts or so. Therefore, the user has to set the nominal regulation low enough to guard band against highest worst case excursion at node one. In this example, it might be the 1.1 zero zero volts V out nominal setting. At number two, our worst case tolerance and transient drop combine to give a range of VDD that the processor could experience in this example 1.05 volts to 1.16 volts. And at number three, the user has to set the microprocessor clock frequency to a frequency low enough to always work at only 1.04 volts. As an example, uh, this could be 1.8 gigahertz or something similar. Then the clock speed and the maximum RMS of VDD at number four, both determine the maximum heat or how long the microprocessor can run before it has to be throttled back due to it reaching temperatures near its maximum die temperature. If things are getting too hot too quickly, the clock frequency and even VDD might need to be lowered. Here is a block diagram of a mobile power system. The power regulator IC fits between the charger slash PMIC VSYS rail and the core of the microprocessor. There can be one or two power regulator ICs in the system. 
the more powerful application processors, will usually require one separate buck for the CPU core and one buck for the graphics processor core. In the past, these bucks were often integrated within the PMIC. But as the power has increased and the performance becomes more critical, we observe the trend of disintegration. Maxim buck regulators used in mobile applications operate in three modes. These modes are skip mode, turbo skip mode, and forced PWM mode. Skip mode provides the lowest supply current and highest efficiency at light loads. Turbo skip mode combines superior transient response, the same as the forced PWM mode, with light load efficiency. Forced PWM mode provides near constant switching frequency for noise sensitive applications. Now let's discuss automotive power. The automotive industry is growing very fast and there are a lot of trendsetters coming into play. There has been a constant increase in the number of engine control units or ECUs in vehicles, which means there will be a larger power requirement. These ECUs can be either for vehicle infotainment systems or for advanced driver assistance systems. Maxim Automotive Infotainment and ADAS systems include radar, audio video for infotainment, surround view systems, rear seat entertainment, the instrument cluster, heads up displays, and active antenna. The input voltage requirements for these systems are varying and can be as high as 36 volts and as low as 5.5 volts max. This block diagram gives a better understanding of Maxim's automotive power portfolio. We have a car battery along with a primary power supply and a secondary power supply. The secondary power supply feeds into the CAN bus, onboard systems on chip, memory, and MMICs. These power supplies consist of building block products, e.g. single channel buck converters and LDOs. Similarly, there are differentiated ASSPs, which are targeted for specialized systems on chip. No matter what the target market, people can learn more about Maxim power supplies through the individual data sheets of the devices and online collateral. Most of the power devices are readily available for schematic design and simulation using our EESIM development tool. EESIM is a great resource to generate a prototype schematic on the basis of the required power system specifications and to run simulations to get a glimpse into the performance of the practical board along with the bill of material. Evaluation kits of the products are also available to buy for a quick evaluation of the device. To summarize, in this course, we have given an overview of power supplies used in different markets. We cover basics of standard, industrial, mobile, and automotive power supplies. Different requirements of power levels, size, and load regulation are explained. For more information on this topic, please go to our website at www.paximintegrated.com under Products and Power. We hope you enjoy this video and see you again in another educational video of Maxim Integrated.